ladies and gentlemen welcome to my Elder Scrolls Online add-on tutorial video now right off the bat I do want to mention this video is going to be focused on very 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 new players to the Elder Scrolls Online and really the MMO genre as a whole many MMO players are aware of the process of downloading add-ons, installing them, the programs to use, the websites to go to. For a lot of those players, it's second nature. Uh, so this video is very much dedicated towards those who are just getting into the first getting into this genre and The Elder Scrolls Online for the very first time. So I'm going to be going through at a very slow pace. Uh, it's going to be designed so that I'm not skipping over any steps. So anyone of any skill level should be able to hopefully follow along Leave a comment down below if I've done anything that seems confusing and you're not sure about. I will be happy to respond. So, the very first thing you're going to want to know about installing add-ons for The Elder Scrolls Online is what website you actually want to go to. That website is esoui.com. Now I have that one bookmarked here, but I'm just going to type it in so that you can see it. And it's esoui.com. There you go. You just type that in and it will take you directly to this web page. So right on this web page, it's great because you can see that you have everything, well, all of the add-ons broken up into the different um, types of add-ons that are out there. So maps and coordinates, graphic UI, character development, bags, bank, and inventory. And these are all just different types of add-ons that the mod authors have given a label to, which gets them sorted into these different um, categories. So it's great if you come here and you're not really sure what you're looking for, you just want to see what some good graphic UI mods are. And you can then go through here, change the sorting type, and just go through and look at all of these add-ons. However, that is not the most important part as to why we're here and I will show you why in a little bit once we get this installed. So what you want to do on your first trip here to this website, at the top you have the Minion Add-on Manager Beta, this little icon here. So click on that icon and it'll bring up a new window which shows you this screen here, just click download. And then from here, if you're on Windows, make sure that you are downloading either the 64-bit or the 32-bit. Uh, depending on what operating system you are running. Now in order to find that out you pretty much open up your system settings on your computer so you just head over to settings, system, about, and you just check the system type down there at the bottom. I am running a 64-bit operating system so I would download the 64-bit version. 32-bit, make sure that you're not downloading one or the other uh, you will not have a program that works if you download the wrong bit version. And then you have OS X if you're running Windows and Java if you are running your operating system in a Java runtime environment. So I will download the 64-bit version. Give that just a quick second to download. It's a pretty small download size. As you can see, just about 50 megabytes. Okay, so Minion has finished downloading, so what you would want to do is just double click on the uh, icon here and that will open up the installer, which will open up a window that looks similar to this. You'll just want to click next one or two times to get you to right here where it will ask you where you want to install it. Now I actually have it set to where it will install onto my desktop into a folder called Minion. I'll click next. I'll let it install and then finally click install again at which point it will install it into this folder right over there. There we go. So I do not, actually I do want to launch Minion but I don't want to launch it from here so I will uncheck that box and I can now get rid of my installer. I can open up here and you'll see that you have some different icons and again keep in mind the folder might not be here on your desktop. And I actually don't recommend you put it here, I'm just doing this for testing purposes. You'll probably want to install Minion wherever it is you store your games, which might be in your Documents folder, uh, it might be in your Users Games folder, 
wherever it is that you install games. You could keep it on your desktop. It will work if I demonstrate it here. I just double click on minion.exe. Okay, and here we have the minion main web page. So when you first open up minions bra uh, launcher, you might not have this icon here. I mean, you'll definitely not have these add-ons but it might look completely blank. And that's because you first want to come up here to the top left, click the plus icon, select the game it is that you're about to install any add-ons for, and then find in your computer where it is that you have the Elder Scrolls Online installed. Now mine is actually installed in my games folder on my local disk drive. I have Elder Scrolls Online right there and I select folder. Now that did something a little funky because I already have the Elder Scrolls Online, so I'll just remove my duplicate. And then you'll end up with something like this, but again without the add-ons. So this is your installed add-ons page, and we will get to this in a second, but first I want to show you how to actually find add-ons. Now I mentioned that on the ESO UI website, where you had all of these add-ons here, you didn't really need those because if you click the find more button you can actually do the same kind of searching if I'm looking for bags bank and inventory I can filter through all of those categories just as easily and it works very well you have different types of sorting methods and you can change if they're ascending or descending you can change which versions you're downloading if you're trying to find something for a previous version of the Elder Scrolls Online or if it's updated for the current version and you can even search so if I search you know I've got lore books right here so if I just typed in lore there we go I have lore books lore play votans lore library search so I can just click on lore books let's give this one a try and it opens up a lot of the same information that I would get on the ESO UI web page. I can even look at the pictures that the mod author has uploaded. And at the top right here, you'll see that I have the ability to install as well as having all of the description that the mod author put up on the website as well. So all I would need to do is click install and that takes it right over into my installed mod list so where did that one go that one was lore books there we go so there we go it is now on my installed list and before we go into the Elder Scrolls online game uh, there's a couple of options here that you might not um, notice right away if I want to uninstall this add-on uh, I can click on it but I don't have any option on how to actually uninstall it and that's because what I need to do is right click on the add-on and then click uninstall and I do have other options such as reinstall if there's something funky going on and I want to try giving it another install delete the saved variables which I believe gets the add-on back to its default settings and I'll show you more about that again when we're actually in game ignore updates so that it's not bugging you saying that it wants to download any updates and you can visit the website, which will actually take you directly to the web page. So, very handy. But we are now pretty much done with everything involving the desktop process. That is how you install the Minion add on manager. That's how you open up Minion, get it set up for the game that you want, search for an add on, and install it. The next step is going to take place inside the Elder Scrolls Online itself. Okay, so here we are in my main character uh, selection screen. Now what you want to do is head on over to the add-ons button over here at your left. Select that. And here you have that list of add-ons that you've installed. So we were looking for lore books so here we go it actually defaulted to being selected and sometimes it will be unselected like lore play right below it and sometimes you might notice it will be grayed out like my 
Teemote Extended uh, add-on. See how it's like a gray box instead of a check box or just being blank? It's a grayed out box. Now what that grayed out box means is that this add-on is being used by some of my characters, but not all of my characters. So it's installed on at least one character. So if you want your add-ons to be used across all your characters, you are going to want to make sure that everything is a checkbox. Uh, otherwise you will have uh, some characters with add-ons and some characters without, which might be wanted, but for the most part, add-ons generally work best if um, they're being used across all your characters unless you are having uh, add-ons that are specific for a certain character class. At which point it's a very good idea to make sure that you're not having add-ons that benefit a sorcerer and you're being a dragon knight. <laughs> so, what you will notice though is that if you want to say you're here in your main menu and you want to set that kind of stuff up where add-ons are only for some characters but not others you can't actually do that from the menu all you can do is turn add-ons on or off for all your characters so if you want to get these add-ons set up so that they are for some characters and not others you would actually need to go into your character load up that character and then start messing with the add-ons and that is how you change the add-ons per character. So, we have lore books selected, so every single character I go into will have lore books enabled. If I switch my character here, you will see this character has lore books enabled as well. If I deselected it and then went to characters, selected my other character, lore books is disabled. And that's showing me that it's the same across all my characters, they are all using these settings. So let's keep lore books turned on, that is the one we are using as our test, and let's load up the game. Okay, so here we are in the game world. Now we need to actually double check and make sure that our add-ons are the way that we expect them to be. So we hit escape, we go on over to our add-ons button again. And we confirm that yes, lore books is still selected. Now, what I was mentioning before about certain add-ons being uh, selected for certain characters, lore play, if you keep in mind, was deselected for all of my characters. If I were to come into the character, this character, like I am now, and then selected lore play, once I hit reload UI, it would just take me to a load menu and then take me right back here and lore play would be selected but for my other characters it would be deselected and that is how you end up with a grayed out uh, box next to an add-on that just lets you know that some characters have it and some characters don't unfortunately there is no real clear way to easily see which character it is that has it installed at least not a way that i have seen anyways we confirmed that lore books is enabled so we are good on that front so our next option is to go into the settings uh, button here and then go down to our add-ons uh, settings here and if we go to lore books we can now see that we have all of our options for lore books now you will also see that you've got tons of different uh, settings here depending on which add-on it is that you've installed and what's great about the add-ons for the Elder Scrolls Online is that the order does not actually matter. Uh, now if you're coming from something like Skyrim or Fallout or Oblivion or Morrowind, you know how vitally important it is that add-ons are in an order to where the ones at the bottom of the list are not causing any problems for the ones at the top of the list. Or vice versa. That is not the case with the Elder Scrolls Online or really M any MMO in general. Add-ons do uh, add-on order does not matter because you're not dealing with masters or um, children of the masters or anything like that for um, for any mods. Everything is just these kinds of settings that get loaded up into the game and they're not messing with any of the actual data in the game. So there's no risk that you're going to corrupt a character or have, an, have any 
crazy glitches that are going to stop you from progressing. So you can really mess around with all this till your heart's content uh, until you reach, I believe there is a maximum add-on setting, like the maximum number of add-ons that you can have installed. But if there is an add-on limit, I have not run into one yet. I'm actually running a fairly decent amount of add-ons here. I used to have a list that went to about down here. Uh, I finally had to start removing some, but they don't really ever impact performance. The only thing that you might start having is an issue with key bindings, where you'll start having add-ons conflict with each other, and then they just don't work at all. So it is a good idea to make sure that you are not having add-ons that do similar things. You want to make sure you have very distinct add-ons so that you don't have that risk of them uh, conflicting with each other. And if they do, you will just get a error message in your chat box down here. It's usually a um, LUA or LUI. I'm forgetting what the exact initials are. But it's just a little error warning down here at the bottom left. And uh, it'll let you know that you need to um, mess with your add-ons or something's gone wrong. And uh, I might do a whole other video about dealing with those problems because there are some workarounds for it. But that is not what we are here for on this video. This is just a very simple video about installing one or two add-ons uh, or up until the amount that I have, making sure that you do not have anything conflicting. So. You will also notice that you have add-ons. So you have add-ons and add-ons. This one down here seems to be specific for Harvin's Quest Journal. I have not actually had any other add-ons use this setting, uh, but do keep in mind that depending on what add-on you're using, it might be in one list or the other. So if you don't see it here, you might see it over here. Uh, so do keep that in mind. And for the most part, that's it. That is how you install an add-on into the Elder Scrolls Online, starting from what website you go to, how you install the launcher, how to install an add-on, and how to act activate it in the game. So, hopefully this video has been very informational for a lot of new players. Uh, like I mentioned, this video was not targeted at anyone who is familiar with the process of installing add-ons. And if there are people who are more experienced in add-ons than I am, which I'm sure there's many, many, many people, <laughs> uh, please leave any comments down below if I glossed over anything, if I said anything that was incorrect. I will be happy to create an addendum to this video, uh, making sure that I am um, getting the most accurate information across to anybody watching. But to my knowledge, uh, this is... I mean, these are the steps that I use to install all of my add-ons, and I have not had any problems um, ever, actually. Uh, just with the exception of a few add-ons interfering with each other, and it's just a matter then of install uninstalling one of them using the process that I showed you, where you right-click and uninstall. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I will hope to see you in my next video. Have a good one.